It's been calculated that on average, we eat a credit card's worth of plastic every week. Fortunately, an ordinary man is aiming to make our diets plastic free. A very early memory I have was uh, going with my parents to Brussels for a huge protest against nuclear weapons. I remember watching it on the news and that really had an impact on me. We had four kids. We just took them with us wherever we went. It was a message, take your kids because it's their future. My mom has very similar sensitivities when it comes to injustice. And there's a lot of that I recognize in myself. I'm really very proud because um, he dares to take a risk. He dares to talk to people about these uh, enormous problems. Activism in my life is tremendously important because it's my most intense expression of being human. We are not separate from nature in any way. Ineos Project One is uh, an expansion of an already existing uh, plastics factory from Ineos in Antwerp, in the port. Ineos Project One, it's the one giant we have to take down. Today, Thomas joins forces with grandparents for the climate. So if we make a big circle, uh, I can give you a small briefing of the pellet hunt that we're going to do today. You're here to witness. That's really what we're doing. We want to get an idea of the concentration of plastic pellets on the border of the river. I can't believe it's so many colors. We are basically creating a record, so we can't look away anymore. In order to make our diets plastic free, Thomas is taking on Ineos one of the world's largest polymer producers. But he isn't doing it alone. A bunch of other activists are helping him on the ground, while lawyer Tatiana is battling it out in the courts. Plastic pollution and plastic production have immense impacts on climate, biodiversity and human health. Ineos wants to bring frac gas from the US to Europe to make the building blocks of plastics. The whole process is very carbon intensive, Plastic factories are already producing more than we need to meet the global demand. But before the products even hit our shelves, there is often another issue. They produce these uh, plastic pellets. They lose them all the time, uh, which is something we witness. And then, of course, the stuff they don't lose gets converted into uh, plastic, which is often single use, which also ends up in the environment. If an oyster it's one of these pellets. With all the toxic chemicals on their surface, then a fish eats the oyster, and then we eat the fish. It's traveling from the environment to our plate. Along with being responsible for more plastic entering our food chain, certain companies are known for utilizing a technique to reduce environmental law scrutiny. Salami slicing is used by lawyers to explain how big companies slice permits into small chunks to make the environmental impact of their projects appear smaller. When you go to an environmental authority and you say, I want to cut down these trees, build this building, make this parking lot. When you split the project into slices, you give a false impression about how big the project is and how massive the effects on the environment are. Thanks to Client to Earth, we already cancelled half of Project One. We stopped their original deforestation permit. We went to court and we told the judge, you need to assess the whole thing before granting any permit. The court agreed with us, so we managed to stop Ineos from cutting down the trees. With the go-ahead for Ineos Project One suspended, Thomas and Client Earth are determined to stop the development completely. We already got this far. We're only a year and a half, two years in. I don't think they're going to win. I think we're going to win. You as an individual can do something by putting pressure on your bank 
on your politicians, on your pension fund, so that your money doesn't fuel this crisis. Gather allies, gather different organizations, gather different activists, people on the ground, do your homework, and really pick that one fight you can win.